right, I'm just gonna put this up front right now. I'm giving this program a four out of 10, and here's why. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel guys. Hope you had a great week so far and your workouts are actually going well too. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And today we are going over Kino Body or Greg O'Galker's Greek God 2.0 program. And to be honest, there is more stuff that I didn't really like or thought needed improvement versus some of the stuff that was okay or thought was fine. And that's what I wanna go over today. Now to get into the program itself, it's a three day split program. That's basically total body each of those days. And he concentrates more on strength development in six key exercises that he deems to be the best for building that kind of Greek God physique. And he has actually eight weeks or so phases, three phases in fact, that are eight weeks each concentrating on a specific part of the body. So the first phase is shoulder focus, the second is chest development, and then you just kind of repeat that third phase uh, in the last eight weeks. Now, one thing here that I honestly don't like a whole lot is that he says that the optimal frequency is three days a week, the three day split. That's kind of true, but in another way it's not. It's gonna vary from person to person and exactly what your goals are. See, Brad Schoenfeld et al. conducted research on this very topic and what the optimal frequency per muscle group per week is. And they found that around the three to four times per week per muscle group was around that optimal spot. There wasn't a whole lot of reason to go to five or six. However, what they also found is that that's okay to do three or four times a week per muscle group as long as volume is equated for meaning you hit the optimal amount of volume per muscle group per week. And research has shown that to be at least 10 sets per muscle group per week. And Greg O'Gallagher's program here does not equate for that volume. There are some weeks where you're not getting that amount of volume. In fact, either week, any of the weeks, you're not getting that optimal volume for most of the muscle groups. And the way he has it structured here is that he has a workout A and a workout B and you alternate between them. So one week you're doing workout A, then workout B, and then workout A on those three days, and then the next week you switch. So it's workout B, workout A, workout B. So this makes even the frequency per muscle group to not be consistent from week to week. So sometimes it'll be okay, and then the next week it won't be enough. And like I said, either way, no matter which week it is, the volume is not equated for the right frequency. So ultimately here, He's not necessarily wrong in saying that three days a week is optimal or the best. But again, that's gonna vary from person to person as long as that volume is equated for, which he does not. He needs to ultimately add in more volume altogether. Now, one thing he also states here is adding ultimate strength on these six key exercises he deemed the best ones, which is a bit debatable in itself. You wanna get as strong as possible in those. And yeah, okay, that's fine. You do want to get strong, absolutely. But to say that this is all you really need to do to get absolutely strong in all of these main lifts that he puts on here and then you're gonna get this great physique, that's not necessarily true either because again, it's gonna vary from person to person and you absolutely need to add in various isolation movements for optimal muscle growth. That's just the truth. And that's, again, another thing that he doesn't really equate for here. Then there's the fact that the exercise selection he has itself. There's, again, nothing bad about it, but I'm not so sure it's necessarily optimal either. He puts the incline bench press over the regular bench press, saying that it's better because it's going to develop that kind of lifting or that really good Greek physique here, of lifted chest. I'm not really sure about that. The incline press develops your upper part of your chest, the clavicular part up here. You're kind of neglecting down here, the lower part of your chest. He equates a little bit for that later on, but most of the upper body movements in terms of the pushing movements mainly develops that shoulder region. Again, that's necessarily wrong, but you don't want to overdo it. And I'm afraid the way he has it programmed right now is you're gonna end up overdoing your shoulder joint a little more than you should be. 
Not to say that you're necessarily going to reach an injury at some point, but he's neglecting some certain areas. But he also says at some point here that he has it programmed in a way so you're not going to overtrain. One thing I want to say right here, guys, is you're not going to overtrain. The only people who are ever at risk of overtraining are Olympic level athletes because of how much they truly train. You, on the other hand, doing this program three days a week or really any other program, four or five times a week or whatever, you're not gonna run in any risk of overtraining. You're just not. Maybe you'll get to overreaching where you need to take a few days off or maybe even a week, but not overtraining because that's something you'd have to take a break from for months. None of you are in a risk for that, so don't even worry about it. Now, there's also a part here where he has some new training techniques or principles that I can understand what he's talking about, and in some ways, maybe they can work, but he acts like they're far superior to what traditional lifting is, what people have been doing for decades. So for example, one thing he talks about is a reverse pyramid training, where you do your heaviest set first, and then you go down from there, instead of doing the lightest first, and then working your way up. I can see what he's talking about here, because you want ultimate energy for your heavy set, that's fine. I don't think necessarily it's the wrong way, but it's not necessarily superior to traditional way of progressive overload, starting with your lighter set. There's nothing wrong with that because people have been completely successful with that for, like I said, decades. It's what Arnold did. It's what a lot of bodybuilders do, and they're perfectly successful with it. There's also a thing he calls keno rep training, where you increase the weight overall each set, but you stick with the same number of reps. So for example, you do 12 reps in each of those four sets, but you increase weight in each of the sets. That's not really something new. That's basically following progressive overload, traditional progressive overload. And there's also some times where that's gonna be impossible. It depends on the lift that you do it with. So for example, if you try to do that with a bench press, that's impossible, it's not gonna happen. Unless you start with really light weight and stay with relatively light weight or medium or medium load. So again, I can kind of understand what he's trying to do here, but it's not really necessary or something again that's gonna be superior. Now, when you get to the nutrition section, this section is kind of half and half. There's a part of it that's good, where he talks about counting calories, how much of each macro needs, such as your protein, your carbs, your fats, all of that is fine. What he recommends is perfectly fine. But then, when he gets into meal frequency, he essentially advocates for intermittent fasting. And if you see a lot of his videos, he's a big proponent of intermittent fasting, as if it's a really great or the best diet you can do. It's not. There's a lot of issues with intermittent fasting. First thing first, does intermittent fasting work for fat loss or for weight loss? Absolutely, yes, because it leads to caloric restriction, which is literally the thing that works, restricting the number of calories that you have to consume. All of these diets you put together, keto, intermittent fasting, any of the other ones, they all lead to the exact same thing, which is caloric restriction. That's why they work, but they're not sustainable long-term and they're not gonna to lead to overall better health like he claims. They're not. In fact, there's some research that shows the opposite of it, and there's also research that shows that you're not gonna gain necessarily strength or great physique on these type of diets, and that it can lead to some complications down the road. For example, an eating disorder. With intermittent fasting, you're leaving all your calories to a specific timetable throughout the day, and he recommends doing it in two meals putting all your calories into just two meals each of those days. So he wants you to load up on these huge meals twice. That's an easy way to lead into binge eating or another eating disorder, which absolutely does happen. And there's a lot of documented cases of people developing binge eating or other eating disorders because of some of these diets like intermittent fasting. So, I mean, this is what my main gripes were for this program. I can understand what he's trying to do with it. And if you do try it, can you find some success with it? Yeah, maybe. If you're someone who's untrained or not necessarily has a lot of experience with training. But if you're someone who's an advanced lifter, who's been lifting for years, are you gonna find success on this type of program? I'm not so sure. And before I forget, honestly, there's actually another gripe that I have, which is that he
he makes the claim that some of the exercises he puts are the only exercises that you really need. For example, the chin up. He has you doing that so you're increasing your strength in your chin up by adding weight to it with a weight belt. Nothing necessarily wrong with it, but he makes it out to be the superior back building exercise and really the only one he has. And that's really the only pulling exercise he really has, except for maybe some face pulls here and there that he throws in. But that's not optimal at all. Your back, for example, is not just one muscle. It's a ton of muscles grouped together. So doing one main exercise with face pulls thrown in here or there is not gonna build your back optimally. You need to have multiple back or pulling movements to help develop your back muscles. Same with the chest. He doesn't have the optimal number of exercises for that or frequency for that group. And the same thing can be said for the lower body. You're not going to develop your lower body all that well on this program. He just doesn't have the frequency for that equated or the right volume for that equated at all. So look guys, at the end of the day, if you want to give this program a try, can you have some success on it? Sure. Are you going to get hurt on it? No, I don't think so. I don't think necessarily loading up the chin up, for example, as heavy as you possibly can is the safest or best idea. Same with dips, especially since most people don't get the optimal range of motion in that movement. And then they start adding weight on top of it. You know, focus on the range of motion first. And like I said, the nutrition advice is half okay, half not so much. So you need to be careful with that. If you have tried it and you have a different opinion than mine, and you really liked it, and you found success with it, that's great. That's fine. But at the end of the day, I think there's other programs out there that would be more optimal for most other people. Like some of the programs I reviewed from Jeff Nippert or Jeremy Ether, or from Renaissance Periodization. Like I said, my final score for this is gonna be a four out of 10. Some things are okay. Most of it on the other hand though is not optimal or needs improvement, or is just not actually something that's real or something that he just kind of made up that's not necessarily better than traditional lifting that we've been doing for decades. All right, guys, so that is my review of Kino Body or Gregor Galker's Greek God program. Let me know what you think down below if there's another program you want me to review. Again, write that down below. And also subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week.